Hi guys, I'm Bobsy, and in this video I'm gonna go over how you work with scene management in Fishnet. Now, in order to get you guys into understanding this and building a proper foundation, because it's something I've seen a lot of people struggle with, I'm just gonna do a little bit of talking, because it's important that you understand the concept behind it. Now, I know a lot of people are probably gonna skip ahead, start copying my code, but for the love of God, help yourself and just allow a minute for me to explain what's gonna going on here. So I've drawn out this little scene setup here, we can see we have one scene, which is our starting scene. So you can see I've just set up a starting scene here with the network manager, and then when I press Start, I just start the server and the client as well and now I'm connected. So this is basically what this setup is. You can see we have the server, we have client one, which in this case is myself, and then there would be two other clients joining. And well, because it's the default scene, it's just all connecting and working as you know it from the base setup of Fishnet. Now, as soon as I then change scene from the server, the server will be responsible of this. If we do not do any sort of actual scene management, well, it will look like this. Even though all players are still connected to the server, they are connected through scene one, which means any network calls going on in scene two will not be sent to anyone because nobody knows that they're connected to the scene. So what we need to do is we need to tell it that this is going on. So in case of a host setup where it's both a server and a client, it will look like this. And we need to add the connections to the scene in order for it to work properly. Now you can add connections manually with the scene manager add connections to scene. That's a very basic thing to work with. But what I'm going to go over is the default scene because that's what most people are going to be using. The default scenes in Fishnet means that well, everybody connected needs to be connected to the scene. So in most cases when you change scene you want everybody's connection to follow along right and you want everybody to load the scene this is actually the easiest thing to do in fishnet and it is the most common scenario as well but there might be some situations where you want to use for example of scene stacking well in which case you don't want all the clients actually to be connected you might only want these two in this scene and then another scene for the last guy and so on you get the idea so you can actually get really creative with the connections and the scenes but in most cases you just want to change scene and have all the connections move and that's the case we're going over today so as you can see i've just set up the scene one where where all that I have is just the basic network manager already there. With the network hot canvas, I just disabled the canvas and I just set the auto start type to host in this case because, well, I just want this inspector to always be the host. I also just made this bootstrap manager where I'm going to attach this bootstrap scene management or scene manager script that I just made myself. So as you can see, we open it up and it's actually a completely empty script except for that I am setting it to don't destroy on load on await because I want this script to remain between scenes. Now, if you look at my Steam setup, I actually have a whole scene for this, for just this case. And I prefer doing it like that, but we don't really need that for this case. I'm just gonna have this single script move between scenes as well as the network manager and so on. So first off, this script is gonna stay mono behavior because it's a bootstrap script. So we want it running at all times. But by using the fishnet namespace, we can still open up our update loop and then check if we are at the server by using what's called the instance finder. And then I can just say dot is server. The instance finder basically allows us to interact with fishnet without having to be a network behavior script. This can be very useful in a lot of cases. So in this case, I can just say if we're not the server, I'll just return out of the update loop. And this is just going to be a example setup. So for my case, I will just be doing if input dot get key down, which means if we press a button key code dot let's do alpha one. So if I press the button one, something is going to happen. And well, we can do the same if I press the button two. And this is where we can just choose to load between the scenes. So now let's make a function for this. Let's make a void load scene and let's have it take in a string, which will be the scene name. So these can then send it in here. So down here, I can say this and that would be scene one, which is what I called my other scene. And the other one can just be named scene two. I haven't even made that scene yet, but let's go ahead and do that right after. So inside a load scene, what we can then do, because now we know that we are on the server. If we are on these calls, we are on the server. We could technically do an extra check in here. There's absolutely nothing wrong about that. That would still work. And what we can then do is we can grab the instance finder, the scene manager. And then what we can do is we can do the load global scenes. Load global scenes will then take in some data of the type scene load data. So now we've got to make that. So let's do that prior and say scene load data. This is pretty much the data struct that Fishnet uses to know that, well, we are interacting with the scene at this point. So typically with Fishnet, you'd just call this SLD for scene load data. And we can make a new scene load data out of this. And see, this scene load data will just be based off of, well, the scene name that we want to load. And it's as easy as that. We just throw in the scene load data here and this should just work. Now it should load a global scene for everyone. It's actually that easy. Now, the thing that's important to be aware of is we also need to unload the other scenes now. And you do that a bit differently. But first of all, let's just ensure that this setup works. So let me go and make this new scene. So let me copy this, call this scene two. And remember in your build settings, if you go to file, 
build settings, it's important that the scenes are in here, both of them, else we won't be able to use any sort of scene management in Unity in general. And well, from scene two, if we go in there, we know that the connection is not going to start from in here. Uh, I'm just going to rename this to scene two, so we can easily see that. Maybe change the color of the background so we can easily see the change and delete the network manager and the bootstrap manager because we will be starting it from scene one. This could be, for example, our main menu. Now, it is important, of course, that we ensure that this is spelled completely correctly. As long as it is, it should work. So let's go ahead and hit play. And now if I hit on the number two, you can see now we've loaded scene two as well. The issue is now obviously that, well, we have two scenes running. That's kind of the issue. I can load scene one again on pressing one and two. Nothing more will happen because the scenes are already open. So as you could see, we also need to unload the scenes. And well, we can just make our own functionality for this called unload scene, just like we made the other one, take in a string of the scene name, which will be the scene that we are unloading. Now unloading a global scene is almost pretty much completely similar to this, as in we can pretty much just copy paste this and actually just copy paste this as well. Could have copy pasted the whole method if we wanted to. And instead of scene load data, well, it's scene unload data. And it's really that simple, actually. And then instead of load global scenes, we just do unload global scenes like so. And well, again, because we are on the server, all of this is going to be fully server controlled. Nothing else will be happening to if any of the clients presses a button because they won't even get this far because they'll be stopped by this. Now, you could also just turn off this script or disable it by awake, for example. Or actually, you can't do it in awake because at that point, the instance find is probably not there. But you get the idea. You could technically just disable the script if you're not a server at this point because this is a fully server controlled script. But here, let's just do unload scene and then just unload the opposite one unload scene two and down here we can unload scene one and now let's just go test this out i'm going to start the game press on two and as you can see it loaded scene two it unloaded scene one i can press on one again and that will work just fine so you see now we're perfectly fine moving between scene one and two now let's go ahead and build it and test it out Now, one thing that's important to note here is because I didn't change this, my build is now going to be the host. So I can just go on to my Spectre and say that this is now a client. Now you can see this is started and this is in scene one. I'm just going to load here and you can see I now connected. So both of them are connected to the same thing. And if over here on this, which is the host, I press on the number two, you can see both scenes are now loaded perfectly fine. And even the client got it loaded as well. And I can move between scenes very easily, just like so. And it's actually this easy to work with Fishnet scene management. Now, of course, we can go more in depth in later videos about how you properly control what connection goes into scenes and so on but with this base understanding and this setup it's actually very easy for you to go to the documentation yourself and just have a quick look there are guides on loading and unloading scenes and general scene management is actually really good so i would say go give that a look and hopefully this video was able to help you out and other than that leave a like a comment and subscribe if this helped you out if you have any questions leave a comment down below and i'll do my best to try and help you out and just have a wonderful day